So what's, what's the difference between the super, super wealthy becoming 400 billion less wealthy versus the rest of us coming about 400 billion less wealthy? Well, thank you, first of all, for having me this morning here. Look, I mean, on an absolute term, obviously, numbers look big uh, percentage-wise. Um, you know, um, it, it might be relatively small. Billionaire wealth declined 4.3 percent last year to 8.5 trillion. Uh, but if we put it in perspective over the last five years, uh, it's up 35 percent. That's an additional 2.2 trillion. Now, you say that uncertainty and geopolitical turmoil caused a lot of billionaires to put too many assets maybe into cash. Uh, are you advising clients to maybe move out of cash and into somewhere else that potentially could generate higher yielding returns? And, and where is that right now? So uh, what our clients are doing actually varies quite a bit. Of course, there are clients, billionaires, who might be ultra-conservative, and um, they take their risk in their business, and then the rest of the money might be in treasuries and munis, and that's it. But most of our clients, actually, who are investment savvy or working with advisors, who are uh, investment savvy in their family offices are not in cash for the large part. What they're doing is they're diversifying for tougher times. They are uh, actually, as part of this um, research, we have we did a survey for our 100 advisors around the world who cover more than 100 billionaires. And what they're telling us is a third of them have sold businesses over the last 12 months, and 30% expect them clients to sell businesses over next year. So what they're doing with the set, with the proceeds of those business sales, they're turning around and investing them into a wide range of private companies. So they're still investing, but they're diversifying their exposure in terms of business and geographic exposure. Now, now based on your report, it looks like American billionaires were the one, was the one place uh, across the globe that uh, didn't uh, fall, see their assets fall um, last year. So what made the U.S. stand out? What did the U.S. billionaires do right? Well, tech billionaires, for the most part, are concentrated in the U.S., even though we see some in China. And tech billionaires uh, saw their wealth increase more than any other sector last year. So if we take a step back, right, last year's decline, our numbers in our report are from the end of 2018. And it incorporates all the decline in the fourth quarter in the market and none of the recovery since then. And China, for the most part, uh, was in a correction in 2018. And a lot of that is reflected in the numbers. Chinese wealth, billionaire wealth declined 12.3 percent. U.S. Um, did fairly better. And that's why you're seeing better numbers in the U.S. Uh, not unimportant to keep track of billionaires, but why do you do this report? Who's using it for what insights beyond just sort of finding out who's rich? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, we are doing this report not for billionaires to read. It's for everybody else because billionaires are a force, right? Um, they are small percentage in terms of population, but their economic impact is really big, either through their philanthropy, their sustainable investing, but for the most part, for the leadership of the successful companies that they build, which creates jobs, right? They create 20 uh, billionaires that we follow. Uh, employ 27.7 million people. That, that's the size of the UK's workforce. That's pretty big. Um, what, we, what, what, did this, what we did in this report, it's not just quantitative, it's also qualitative, as I mentioned. And there are lessons to be learned from the economic achievements of these people. And not the kind of lessons you might think they're aggressive deal-making. It's more how they're, say, level-headed against crisis. And we identified a number of common personality traits that make them successful, which we can all learn from.